Hi, everyone. So uh, I'm John. I'm a geologist. And um, funnily enough, the first thing everyone says to me when I say I'm a geologist is, um, oh, um, that's what Indiana Jones does, isn't it? And as we know from earlier, uh, no, no, it's not. Um, I have no idea why everyone makes that mistake, but everyone does. So then, you know, just a little aside here. The best description I've ever heard of geology is actually from um, the comic strip Dilbert, if anyone knows it. And uh, they describe geology as being just liquor and guessing. And um, that's, that's pretty close to the bone, actually. Um, so anyway, once I've disappointed people by telling them that I'm not anything like Indiana Jones, the, you, you kind of see the cogs starting to turn in their head and they're going, oh, what, what is there that's cool with geology? Like, what does this guy do? Um, and, you know, they keep going for a little bit and then it's, oh, um, so, uh, like, dinosaurs? <laughs> and, um, yeah, no, I, I don't do anything with dinosaurs. <laughs> um, so, so then, you know, there's, you can kind of see more cogs going and it's like, oh, what else is there? What else? What else? Uh, um, volcanoes? Um, yeah, I, I don't do anything with volcanoes either. So this is where people kind of get a little bit annoyed. They're like, well, what do you do then? So I think the best way of describing it really is I kind of look at what happens when rocks move past each other. <laughs> so pe people then kind of think, oh, right, like, like earthquakes. And, uh, well, no, not, not. <laughs> Not really, sort of, but not really. So I, I work on um, what happens when you get like hundreds or thousands of earthquakes in one place. Um, obviously, that does not happen at once because that would just be absolute carnage. So it kind of happens over a little bit of time, you know, a couple of million years or something. No, not to, no big deal. Um, so... Yeah, then, then people are kind of like, well, you know, what else happens when you have rocks moving past each other if it's not earthquakes? So I kind of take it back to the start then and go, well, when you have one earthquake, what, what happens is you have two big bits of kind of solid rock that are moving past each other. And I'm talking kind of big enough bits of rock here, like the size of, the size of countries or continents or something. And um, the first thing that happens really when they move past each other is they slip and they... they break and they form, there's like a crack forms. And that's, that's called a fault, by the way. And um, after that, whenever you get movement on that, whenever those rocks move past each other again, it happens on that fault. Um, so you can get, you know, quite a bit of movement on these things. Uh, so like, how much are we talking? From, from one earthquake, you might be talking kind of a couple of centimeters up to a couple of meters. But when you start to add all that together, you know, it can be really quite a lot. So a couple of, up to a couple of kilometers. And, you know, you might kind of think you might notice that. So like, <laughs> how long does it take? Like, why, why don't we see that? Um, and so part of my work is to work out how long it takes. And that's actually pretty easy because what happens is if, if these rocks are moving kind of up and down past each other, kind of like, that, rather than like that, um, one of the things you get is you get a hole in the ground, just in here. This is a bit awkward. <laughs> so I'm going to just make this for a minute. Um, <clears throat> so when we have that, that hole in the ground, that kind of, the next thing that happens is that gets filled in with, um, with, with stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. Just, just an aside, we, we call that stuff sediment, and it's, it's basically just building up everywhere most of the time, but I don't want to worry about that too much for now. So anyway, we have our hole in the ground, and it, it gets filled in with this stuff, and then, then the rocks move again, and we get another hole in the ground on top of where the first one was, and then that gets filled in with, with more stuff. And then if the rocks move again, well then, that second bit of stuff, that hasn't moved as far as the first bit of stuff. And that, that allows us to work out how fast those rocks are moving past each other if we know how quickly that stuff is building up. 
And we, we can work that out by looking, well, by looking at fossils mainly. And yeah, sorry, still no dinosaurs. <laughs> Uh, so we're, we're talking about microfossils usually, which are like, they're usually like little shells, like look a bit like snails or something. Not terribly interesting, but they're kind of useful because um, we, we know kind of how fast they evolve. So that gives us a time thing. And we know how roughly they, how often they go extinct. So by using that and the, the movements on the actual faults, we can work out how quickly they were moving. So, well, so who cares? <laughs> like, I know I'm biased, but like, I think it's pretty important. So one of the other things that happens when you get these rocks moving past each other and these faults forming is you get a lot of fractures in open spaces forming. And that allows, allows fluids to flow around. In, in, in the rocks. And uh, then, yeah, kind of getting a lot of looks here. Is that, <laughs> does, does that matter? Um, and I, I think it kind of does. So, like, one of those fluids would be oil. So, we use a fair bit of that. Like, it's kind of important to know a bit about how it, how it moves. Um, and there's other things as well. So, like, most metals are formed from fluids flowing underground. Um, so that we use them for everything, like you know, microphones and stands and all sorts of stuff. Um, and uh, most of, so when I'm talking about fluids here, I'm, I'm it's mostly water with other stuff dissolved in it, and it kind of flows about and it mixes with other fluids. And uh, yeah, basically, eventually you might get some of it forming kind of deposits of something that's useful. But in order for them to be useful, we need to be able to find big amounts of them in one place. So how do we do that? <laughs> well, as I said, one of the best ways of, of these fluids flowing around is uh, along these faults. So one of the key things is to, if we understand how those, those faults form, and how they develop, that's kind of a good place to go looking for deposits of all this useful sort of stuff. So I suppose that's not too bad for someone that doesn't know anything about dinosaurs or volcanoes. <laughs> and that's me. Thank you very much.